The Great Googly Moogly Outdoors. It's not really the Great Googly Moogly Outdoors. That's not the name of the channel, but man, wouldn't it be cool if it was? I don't know why I didn't think of that. I mean, it just rolls right off the tongue. And it probably would have been hot. It would have been the end thing. People would have been watching the Great Googly Moogly Outdoors with your host, Willie. Now, I know what you're thinking. It sounds silly. But let's just think about it for a second. How many silly things Hold on. Something silly's happened somewhere else. That happens at least six to eight times a day. Anyway, as I was saying about silly things, if you just think about it, how many silly things took off and became popular? Yard darts. Beanie Babies. Furbies. The Chevy Chevette. All of these things became popular and they were silly. You don't see them anymore though, because pretty much all of them in some way, shape, or form probably got someone killed. Anyway, I'm trying out a new microphone. It's another one of these little road, I'll show it to you if you want to see it. It's one of those guys. It has this little foam egg on the top, and it came with wires and cables that don't do anything. But this one does, so I'm really happy. Now, today, I'm going to tell you a really short story, and then we're going to move on to some equipment that I found that I want to go use. And I was going to go use today, but it didn't happen. You know why it didn't happen? Because I had to go cut grass. So, now back to our previous scheduled story. I got tires on Burt, finally. That was quite a fiasco. Started out on Wednesday, started putting them on on Thursday, didn't get the car back till Saturday. Long story. It is a very long story, and that's as short as I could make it. They couldn't get the tires on the rims. Called me up and said, hey, I got bad news. I said, oh, I love it when people call and say that. And they said, well, we can't get the tires on the rims. And I said, what? And they said, we can't get the tires on the rims. And I said, how can that possibly be? I said, are they round? They said, yeah. I said, are they black? He said, yeah, they're black. I said, they got a hole in the middle? He said, yeah. I said, well, it sounds like a tire to me. Why won't it go on the rims? He said, I don't know. It just won't seal. We can't get them to seal. What they're saying was is that these tires were evidently on the bottom of the stack, the bottom of the pile. They were the first ones made and the last ones to get sold kind of thing. And uh, they were crushed. And they just couldn't get the darn things to pop open and seal on the rims. So, regardless, they had to order some new ones. And when they ordered the new ones, well, then they didn't have time to put them on because it took too long to get them. And then I had to wait till Saturday, which messed up the video that I was going to make because I was going to leave on Saturday and then get the car till Saturday afternoon at 4 o'clock. A lot of things were said. A lot of words were passed. So, in order to get past all that, I went to an antique store. Now, you know me. When I go to an antique store, I don't usually come back with too much in the way of fishing rods. No, I don't, because the fishing rods have a tendency to be, well, they're just not satisfactory. What I ended up finding was something I don't normally find, and that was a fly rod. I found a six-foot Fenwick, what I believe is a five-weight, if that's what they called it back then, but it's very small. So I would almost have thought it was a three-weight, but it's, I think it's a five, but it's six-foot. Hey. I'll get it and show you. Now, right now, I want everybody to calm down. I've got a green reel on it because that's what I intend to use on it at first. As you can see here, where is it? It says Fenwick right there. And it is a very cool little fly rod. It's not too whippy. It's six foot, so it's, a, it's you know, Looks like it's a spiral wound kind of fiberglass. Doesn't say what it's made of, but it's a model number of FF605. 
which I'm assuming stands for six foot five weight. Hey, I'm just guessing here. Just guessing. And the FF is probably Fenwick fly rod. That's a guess too. Not a whole lot out there on this thing. Then it tells you what size line to use. And it tells you that it's a two and eighth ounce and the 60 gigamongers, whatever GM stands for. What's GM? General Motors? 60 GMs? 60 General Motors? Is that what that means? Hmm. There's a CM up there. Wonder what CM is. Cucamonga? CM centimeters. Okay, I'm not stupid. I'm just playing. Just playing with you a little bit there. What I did was I put this really nice. And it's nice. I'm not kidding. As an underspin, got a citation here. We got a citation 110, just a straight 110. Now, I know a lot of people, I don't use the straight 110s or 100s very often unless they're underspins because I don't like the small button. But on a fly rod, they're great. They're wonderful for that, for being able to just reach back there and bloop, you just grab up that and you got it bloop when you do it. And I, I think I've had that conversation before. But I'm really looking forward to using this rod. It's a beautiful uh, mud brown, pudding brown. I don't know what you want to call it. It's brown, milkshake brown, chocolate milkshake brown. Uh, and it's uh, cleaned up really well. I cleaned up all the cork, you know, just the way I do with the uh, steel wool and it's cleaned up really well. I got some six pound line on this rod, a reel, and I intend to take this thing out and give it a fling or five or 10 or seven or 12. Speaking of old stuff, this one's gonna make, this is gonna be an interesting one. This is a 45th anniversary Johnson. That's right, you knew doggone well that there was gonna be a century involved in here in some way, shape or form. Now this is the 45th anniversary that I built, that I told you guys I was going to continue to keep using it to see how it would handle. That's right, to see if it would hold up. And then we are going to give this reel away. That's what we're going to do. We are going to give this reel away to some lucky subscriber. All 12 of you can get on there and you might win this reel. This might be its last fishing outing with me before the giveaway. I figure it's about time. I've been using it a lot. I haven't been filming using it a lot just simply because you get tired of seeing it. So I've been using it to see if anything would happen, go wrong, break, bust. And so far, nothing has gone wrong with this reel. Um, I think we had some uh, early tangles when I first got it or put it together. Um, this was the reel, of course, that we built out of a bag of parts. It was totally disassembled. It was just frames and bodies and things everywhere. And we built this reel. Now you can go back to that video and watch and see this thing in action and being put together, I guess you'd say. Uh, right now I have this on an Ozark Trail OTX. Um, these rods are okay. Um, Honestly, though, I think if I was going to spend the money, I mean, I think they're $37 or something like that. Um, they're heavy. I think they're a bit chunky. And I do not like the gap, obviously, because I have filled it with this lovely rope to keep that gap from bothering me. Because it does. Uh, I don't think it's long enough. It needs to be a little longer. If you want to make the entire shaft longer, and leave that gap that's fine but at least leave enough handle up here so when you're holding this thing the palm of your hand isn't in the gap area back here that's just me it might not be anybody else having a problem with that it could just be me anyway this reel will be given away most likely after this next video i intend to get out to the campground hook up the trailer to the back of old bert put the golf cart on there, go up and mess around for the day, eat some hot dogs. Do they have hot dogs? I think they do have hot dogs. Maybe we'll take the stove. That would be fun. We'll take the stove and we'll take our own dog on hot dogs. Heck yeah. And that's what we're gonna do. So anyway, we're gonna cut off now and uh, maybe you'll get to see what I'm piddling around with tomorrow a little bit before we head up to the campground and do a little day tripper kind of thing up there because Old Labor Day weekend is coming up and I want to get the week before Labor Day because you know how the weekend can be. You get that Monday off and people just go berserk. It's crazy. 
It's absolutely crazy. People live for the weekends. They work all day, they're tired, they're worn out. The weekend comes and that's, they just kill themselves. They absolutely destroy themselves and have to get back up and go to work on Tuesday. Thank goodness it's only four days, I guess. Anyway, we'll see you very soon. That's right. Some serious stuff's getting ready to happen. Hold on tight. I know I will be. Well, hello everyone. Willie here at The Great Outdoors. We're on a mission. We're on an adventure. This is going to be a long video. I'm going to warn you now because I'm trying to squeeze everything that I've wanted to do for the last year into one video. And it's all been stuff that's kind of been dead-ended, you know, uh, loose ends, I guess you'd say. If you see back there behind me, well, yep, there's a golf cart back there. And if you look at all this stuff back here, yeah, there's a lot of camping gear back there with fishing rods and reels. Right now, we just left the house, and uh, this is a first for Bert. He's got a lot of load on him. It's an adventure, it's a mission, and it's a test. Had this been an actual emergency, there'd have been a lot of beeping and people running and screaming and roads tied up and traffic, looting and all that. So this is just a test. Cross your fingers for me. Whee! Let's go, Bert. Well, the first part of the adventure has been, uh, I, I guess we've won because we made it to the campground. Uh, unfortunately, there's a couple of big fellas in front of me, but we made it here. Bert did great, did absolutely great. He, he, the whole reason behind this is uh, I wanted to pull some weight with this thing. The golf cart weighs about 900 pounds. Trailer, uh, utility trailer, let's just say 200 pounds, because uh, I don't really know. Um, then we got the entire car loaded down back here with food, tent, camping equipment, fishing rods, tackle bag. And we all know my tackle bag probably weighs about 20 pounds by itself. Um, camera equipment, clothes, suitcase, whatever. And me at 170. Uh, this was a this was a good good test. So we've we've gone about 60 miles, and uh, and here we are. Now we've just got to get in the campground. But we're not going to be in an actual camper spot. We're going to be doing the tent thing. Um, so that's right, the tent thing. The tent that I bought like a year and a half ago that never got to use, she's coming out of the bag today. And we're going to see if our $30 was well spent. As well as a lot of things, because we have a lot of things that I bought all on a budget. That was the whole idea. Everything on a budget. So anyway, let's get out of this uh, car and uh, get up there to the front and get ourselves checked in. Man, I'll tell you, I may have made a mistake. It was cool the last three days, but man, it's hot right now. Hopefully it's gonna get cool tonight. Cause I can tell you right now, it's actually cooler in the sunlight than it is in the sun dome. I can see why they call it the sun dome. They call it the sun dome because let me tell you what, it's about 15 degrees hotter inside that thing than it is out here in the sun. I'm actually sitting in back of the car, if that tells you anything. But it's up. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about it a little bit later on tonight. I'll tell you a little bit about everything that's going on. And uh, just letting you know everything's up. And uh, I'm going to go to the store. Probably get a bag of ice. And a drink. Because mine ain't cold right at the moment. So... Here we are. Yes, this is the tent that I bought a year ago that we never got the chance to use. Thanks to uh, weather, sickness, illness, messed up vehicles, a little bit of everything, we didn't get a chance to use it. It is set up, and I know you probably would have liked to have watched me set it up, but I would not have liked for you to have watched me set it up. 
one person trying to set up the old Sundowner 6, Sun Dome, let me get it right. It's the Sun Dome. It isn't easy. One person trying to accomplish this by themselves is not easy. And I managed to pull it off. It took me a while. And a lot of people watching and laughing. Yes, I knew I was getting some giggles, but whatever. Uh, it is a 10 by 10 as far as the bottom half goes. And it goes into about a 6 foot 3, 5, something like that in the middle. It's not a bad tent considering I paid 30 bucks for it at Ollie's. Now, since I've mention the price at $30 at Ollie's. Um, a lot of what you're going to see here today has all been stuff that was bought on a budget, and which I have. Um, everything. Everything. I mean, uh, later on this evening we'll get into a little further into that budget thing, but uh, for right now it is dinner time. And uh, one of those other things that we bought on a budget is getting ready to get used. And uh, I'm going to make me some food thinking about making a couple of hot dogs. That's right. Uh, and mainly because my ice is melting and uh, I don't want my hot dogs to go bad before I get a chance to eat them. I was going to get some ice from the uh, store, but it's Sunday and they closed at 3. I really could have put this tent in a better place because it's like this is the only spot out of all these trees where there's no shade. So does anybody remember this? That's right, the Coleman Cascade. We cooked some pancakes on it during the winter. Got it, $29.99. Managed to get it on sale because I had a coupon and got the thing for $27. Bucks. We're going to cook some hot dogs on it tonight. Well, it looks like I'm going to have to cook all four of these hot dogs because the so-called Ziploc, it's not there. There's no Ziploc. There's no zip. There's nothing. There's just a yellow vein. It's supposed to be a Ziploc where I can zip them back and put them back in the container and I could put them in the cooler and keep them cool but no I can't do that now and I have no Ziploc bags and the store is closed what a great day this is turning out to be wonderful now we all remember this guy here let's get some gas flowing and the fire's on Now this little cook set that I'm using with the bowl here and the frying pan, this is an Ozark Trail. That's right, comes right out of Walmart. Also comes with a little bowl and a blue cup inside. Uh, and I, it's like a pan, like you can boil water or you know you can lift it up or you can hang it over a fire, that kind of thing. And it's, uh, it's like 10 bucks. No, it's not non-stick or anything, but I'm okay with that. All right, we're back inside. Got my partially burnt turkey hot dogs. Had to make four of them because the Ziploc thing doesn't Ziploc. Nice bottle of water. And for dessert, Twinkies. You can't go wrong with Twinkies. Let me go ahead and bite into one of these burnt rascals. Mmm. Hey, when you're hungry, they're fine. And they're hot. Hot. Here, let me wash the burnt taste out of my mouth. Good lukewarm water. Wash down this hot dog. I forgot a few things on this trip. One was paper towels. Two was ketchup and mustard. Now, I got this spot. Kind of wish I didn't now because it is kind of right out in the sun. There are trees. When the sun goes down, it's going to go down over here to my right. And it will be behind the trees and it's going to cool off a lot. Hopefully. Now let's, let's talk a little bit about camping on a budget. A lot of things came from Ollie's, places like Ollie's. Um, my $12 fan that I have over here that's worth about $4. It puts out at least $2.75 worth of air, but I got it for $13. Now, was that a good buy? Well, let's just put it this way. When I get back home, I'm going to tell it goodbye because... It puts out enough air, a little bit. It's not the greatest fan in the world. For something that was called the LifeSmart Turbo, I expected a little bit more out of it. Let's just put it that way. Now, I knew I would need some kind of lighting for the evening. So I looked around, got online, shopped, Amazon, did a few of those things. Well, ended up going to Harbor Freight. With this little guy here. 
Luminar Outdoor has uh, three AA batteries and it's a uh, you pull it up and it fires itself off there of course I had to bring some more batteries or whatever but it was four dollars and ninety nine cent for a three or four day trip just to get out here four dollars and ninety nine cent as opposed to everything else I looked at which was twenty dollars and above or you go into the rechargeable realm which gets up even higher now I knew I was gonna want to get a shower and we all know that these shower houses and stuff at these campgrounds sometimes they can be a little bit sketchy when it comes to walking in on the old shower it's almost like you're walking in a creek slipping and sliding and it's almost kind of mossy in the bottom so speaking of mossy mossy oak flip-flops just your old school regular flip-flop by mossy oak got a good feeling pad to them typical rubber $4.99 got these at Ollie's as well they'll work I'll throw them in the camper whenever I want them or need them but that's the kind of stuff you know $4.99 I also picked up my body wash and stuff like that uh, toothpaste and that kind of stuff I got it from Ollie's as well and uh, I think my body wash was actually a, a name brand like suave or something like that and it was a $1.89 and it'll do what we need it to do. This little table that I have down here, which you can't see, I'll uh, take this off here and show it to you real quick if you'd like to see it. This little table is made by Ozark Trail. And we all know that the Walmart, who puts out the Ozark Trail stuff, occasionally puts stuff in an aisle that is their clearance aisle. That is where this table came from. Uh, it was normally $29, and they had it on their clearance aisle. I ended up getting it for, uh, I think 16 bucks and it's a very nice little well-made table the little pieces sit in the track here that hold it it's got cup holders on both sides it's pretty tight of course through time it's probably going to stretch but uh, that's all right for what we paid for it and the use that we'll get out of it it'll be fine so 17 bucks for a table now well, let's talk about the trailer real quick uh, that was given to me um, it was in bad shape it was in someone's backyard and uh, it had rotted up pretty bad. Tires were shot. Um, U-bolts had rusted almost completely through. So I took the hubs apart, re-greased the bearings, which were in great shape, no problems there. This needed to be cleaned up. I bought new tires and I bought new U-bolts. Um, getting the tires ended up costing me, I think it was uh, $189 for uh, both wheels, tires, uh, the rims were were already there we just put tires on it and uh, the u-bolt set was 29 something so you know I, I had maybe maybe 300 bucks in the trailer um, and Bert for example you know I, I paid 1500 bucks for Bert obviously if you've watched you've watched the videos before that the cleanup process uh, the new radiator new fan uh, new tires uh, new front brakes and rotors and of course just the cleanup in general uh, the things that I bought um, to, to clean it up all in all right now I have twenty nine seventy nine in Burt I have two thousand nine hundred and seventy nine dollars tied up in Burt I don't feel too bad I think that's okay so anyway what we're going to do now um, we're going to talk about a few other things later on this evening and uh, we might go do some fishing in a little bit, but right now, I'm going to eat my two Twinkies. Did you know that the original Twinkies, when Hostess first made them, were banana flavored? I don't know what flavored they are now. Just golden cake with cream in them. But they're still good. Just wish they were the same size they used to be. Got old Bert. And the Sun Dome 6P, 10 by 10. Absolute bear to put up by yourself tent. I mean, I did it obviously, but man, can't tell you it was fun, that's for sure. And then the sleeping quarters, little table, cot, cooler that costs way too much for no more than what you get. Now let's take a ride. 
Is it running or are you pushing it? Oh, I gotta push it. Oh, okay. Are you talking about YouTube? Uh, yeah, I am. Uh, it's called the Great Outdoors. No, you're not bothering me. You're not bothering me. You're not bothering me. Sure, say it. What's your name? We'll go again. Jeremiah. Jeremiah? We'll go again. If you look down there, if you watch along that edge over there, there's a bass. There's several bass that are chasing the minnows up to the bank. Oh, they are? Yeah. And that's, yeah but it just happened when I walked out here. I, I call that you know if this can sink? If it's going to sink? Well, it's been there a long time. I don't think it's going to sink just yet. I do. You think it's going to sink? Yeah, they like to hang around that edge of those bushes and chase all them minnows. Watch it. You see what that bobber's doing? You know what that means? There's a fish on the end of that thing. Reel it in. There you go. Just, there you go. Reel him on in. Reel him in there. Get him, get him. Oh, what you got there, buddy? You have caught your bluegill. <laughs> hold on, hold on, I gotta take your picture so your daddy can see it. Now to see where I got my hand? Yeah, you go, just hold it right there. Yeah. You want to? Mm -hmm. Okay, you gotta watch him because he's got, he can spike you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just don't want to see him stick you in the hand. Well, the 499 Harbor Freight Lantern is, uh, got us lit up. Lit, lit up? That can't be right. Light it up? Lit up? Well, we're lit up. Fairly well. Enough we can see anyway. So anyway, uh, it's going on 8.15. I'm going to get my stuff together, head up to the bathhouse, take me a nice evening shower, stroll around the campground before nighttime really falls upon us, and uh, get up and start again tomorrow. Cook us some breakfast. I need to wash those pans too. With camping, there's always some form of work. Nothing's ever done. Because you always start something else. Anyway, we'll see you in the morning. Good morning. I just thought I'd give you one of those fake, you know, I just woke up moments like everybody else does when they're doing YouTube camping stuff. Now, it's not too terribly fake to be honest with you I did just kind of wake up that was probably one of the worst night sleeps that I've ever had that didn't involve law enforcement jail cells and hangovers <sighs> my neighbors are already up I don't know how because they didn't go to sleep until almost one we'll talk about that in a little bit Meanwhile, I'm going to uh, get up, get going, get dressed, and uh, hopefully have enough energy to do some fishing. The sun's trying to come up, so we'll see what we can do. First thing is we have breakfast. We have biscuits and gravy, but I don't know. There's just something about it I don't really want. But... We also have chicken and dumplings, which sounds like something that I do really want. I mean, because look how happy those people are. They're out there camping, eating their chicken and dumplings. These people, these people, I know they're lying because this is a breakfast food and if this is the morning time and this is how good they look and feel in the morning I know this is a lie there's just no way they're sleeping on rocks
save the day again because everything out there is soaking wet so I can't sit on it. Let's uh I probably should have just went with the biscuits and gravy because I think that's pretty much all this turned into. There's supposed to be chicken in there somewhere. Them burnt hot dogs are looking better every minute. Well the sun's starting to break across the top of the trees over there so that means I should have been out there fishing about 20 minutes ago. Just as I expected. The water didn't soak in good. So I've got some dumplings that are more like croutons. Maybe I'll just let that sit a little longer. Well, I tried topwater fishing last night. And I only got one hit the entire time. I mean, I must look great. I'm hoping this morning things will change a little bit. It got cool last night. Maybe they'll bite again this morning. If nothing else, I'm glad I came just for the fact that the, the little fella that I helped catch a fish last night, that was his first fish. First fish he's ever caught. I hope that, uh, I, that he enjoyed that. He definitely wanted to keep on fishing, and that's what it's all about, is keeping the kids out there fishing. The other boys, they were out there all over the place trying to catch something. That's part of what it's all about. So I'm going to eat the rest of this mush, and uh, we'll head out to the lake. finally happened. I ain't sure how, but it did. And that's all that happened. I know there's a lot bigger fish in here than you. But I lowered the bobber some and that happened. So. All right, we're over here at the other pond. I just made a cast that absolutely was worthless. Nothing hitting whatsoever. We're bobbing. I don't know if you can see it, but we may be done bobbing now. They might, oh, no, they're still bobbing. Oh, he's swimming. It's swimming now. We might have him. Let's just try. Yes, we got him. Oh, that's a good size one, too. He was a tricky one. He's educated, got experience in the ways of how to get bait off a hook. Come here. Yeah, that's a good one. And of course, it is a shell cracker. Red ear with lacking red in the ear. He's smart. That's how he's gotten that big. I just can't begin to tell you how tickled I am to have caught him good fish but for a fish that size you would have thought there'd been a little bit more bob involved thank you sir let me get those baits over here yeah that was a good one of course the red ears are a little bit few and far between in here you catch one or two and usually that's about it oh we're bobbing and we're swimming we've got him I could tell it was swimming. I knew. When they're swimming, usually is a good chance your hook set's going to mean something. And we got us a gill that pretty much took the hook all the way to his tail. That's why I use these longer Aberdeen style hooks because it makes it a little bit easier to grab a hold of something. Hey, you even got the food in there. Thank you, little guy. I think my bobber is swimming again. It is. Boop. Yep. And there was no bob. There was just swim. Man, this one's got some strength. No, we don't want to go over there. If we go over there, you're going to get hung up in something. Another gill. Stop flinging, gill. 
that one took a little bit longer than the last few but again there was no bob there was just swim and this little feller here about the size of a good goose egg decided he was hungry which I'm okay with because him being hungry gave me something to do and you something to see anyway it's something to see Mm, that's a good one. I wish this pine tree over here wasn't in my way, but that was a good hit. He sunk the bobber. That's what you want to see. You want to see that bobber sink. That's what I want to see anyway. I want to see that darn thing sink and then just gone. And that's what he did. He knew what he was doing. But you notice that red one's still on there and the white ones are gone. Uh, what he find? Whoop! bobbed that was a good bob too come on back up here and now they're hitting in the sun which i'm totally happy with it gives me more places this is a good one more places to fish pretty fish look at that orange belly pretty fish stop it pretty fish stop it stop it stop oh, where there he goes again he is a tricky one. But he won't tricky enough. He got greedy. And when you get greedy, things happen. Hey there, Tricky Bill. That looks like a Tricky Bill. He's just big enough to be talented to get that bait off the hook. But you didn't do it that time, did you, Bill? There you go, Tricky Bill. You're caught. Hope you learned something from this. See you later. Well, this one took a little while, but we got him. He was a hit and run kind of guy. Beautiful red, orange there. And then these guys here that'll stick you. Actually, those ain't too bad. Right there on the bottom, that's the one that'll get you. Then if you go up here to these guys, It'll give you a, a line of them in your hand that you can connect the dots with. Thank you, Mr. Gill. Cross your fingers. We are going to try to catch us a crappie or a bigger bluegill using some plastics. We're going to go with some colors like some bright pinks and things like that and see if we can get anything because I've only caught one crappie the entire time I was here. And I really would like to, before we give this reel away, catch some good stuff with it. Or a couple of good stuff. Something, anything. Now, I have caught other fish with it, obviously, if you've watched any of the 45th anniversary videos. We've caught other fish with this reel, but since this is going to be probably its last hoorah, figured I wanted to catch something else but the fish have been really really particular they just haven't been hitting crappie I don't know where they're at he's usually in here right in this little area man I can just beat the crappie to death oh there we go there we go that's what we want that's what we want right there that's fact fighting like a bass though but it, I think it could be a crappie oh it is a crappie all right, it's exactly what we were. Oh, that's a big one too. It's exactly what we were after. And he wanted some bright pink. Hey, don't you put that thing sticking in the wrong direction? Come here, come here. Can you say thumbnail? Let's see, thank you, sir. I'm glad you like pink and chartreuse. So it has been. It's been a long three days, I'll be honest with you. Um, the first night getting everything inside the Jeep and, and getting Bert packed and ready to go. Getting the utility trailer out, getting the golf cart loaded and locked down. And, and then the next day getting the drive up here, you know, the, the, the 60 mile hike. And everything went great. Bert did perfectly fine. Uh, 
I, I couldn't have been happier with the way things went there. Now, the whole camping on a budget. As you see, we finally got to use the $30 Coleman Sundome 6P. Now, 6P, six person, okay. You may be able to put six people in that thing, but uh, I would say it, if you want to be comfortable, make it a two person, one person kind of thing and be able to put your clothes and your food and your stuff in there with you. Of course, food depending on where you're at. Don't put your food in your tent if you're in a place with bears and lions and tigers and anacondas and things like that. Put that somewhere else. But all in all, it's a good tent. Not the easiest thing in the world to put up by yourself. A lot of giggling from around the campground watching me do that. And no one even offered to help, which is fine. I'm okay with that. Um, so, what else? Oh, everything budget-wise, from fishing line to flip-flops, Coleman stove, you know, all of that stuff was bought on a budget, bought on on sale or at Ollie's or whatever. And I got out here camping for a little bit of nothing. Tent was thirty bucks. The stove was thirty bucks. Fishing line was five ninety nine. You know, flip flops were four ninety nine. That kind of thing. You can do this stuff on a budget, but you got to be a tent camper. Now, I'm gonna be totally honest with you. I'm not much of a tent camper. Um, maybe in the fall when it's cooler obviously it'd be more comfortable but me and cots and air mattresses and things like that my lower back don't <laughs> we don't get along i did not sleep well last night i woke up quite a few times unfortunately i had some noisy neighbors uh, i had two neighbors that had dogs that for whatever reason every 35 40 minutes they decided they needed to bark for 15. Um, the woman that was in the corner camper off to the left of me, evidently she had whooping cough or something. I, she, it was the mix between a goose and an elk every 20 minutes. And she'd cough like that for five or six. So those kind of things, it's very quiet out here. And when you hear that, everything from dogs barking to you know people coughing, whatever, it wakes you up. So, am I the greatest tent camper when it comes to public camping? Campgrounds? No, I'm not. I am not. So who knows when the old Coleman Sundo may go out again. But regardless, if this is what you like doing, this will get you out here camping. Look around. Hit Ollie's. Hit Walmart. Ozark Trail. Another great name to find fairly cheap stuff. Walmart always puts a has a clearance aisle. Check that clearance aisle. You'll never know what they're going to put on it. It's only because it didn't sell during the year. It's not because it's a bad product by any means. I've got lots of good stuff off the clearance aisle simply because I walked down it. And did I need half of what I bought? No, not really, but it was good stuff, so I went ahead and got it. And it was cheap. Which is kind of Ollie's thing. Good stuff, cheap. Anyway, had a great time good enough time anyway and uh, probably today this afternoon uh, as soon as the dew starts to dry off of everything uh, I'm gonna pack up the tent we're gonna head back to the house but let's talk fishing hey I got a gnat in my ear 45th anniversary couldn't have asked for a better reel today for what we were doing bobber fishing that young fella yesterday I think his name was Lincoln caught him a bluegill on the 45th anniversary now he probably had no idea what that thing is. Matter of fact, I would probably say I'm 111% sure he had no idea what that reel was. But he caught a bluegill on it yesterday. We caught bluegills today. One big nice crappie, which I figured was plenty. You've seen me use it before. We are going to give that reel away. Today was its last hurrah. Okay, I'm going to take it home, take it apart, clean it up, and in the next video, we're going to give you a date on when we're giving that reel away. So, be prepared. Now, I am going to go to the store, and I'm going to get me a nice warm hot dog off of their grill. Maybe some ice cream. Most likely some ice cream. Maybe not the hot dog, but most likely some ice cream. Then we're going to start packing up the stuff that we can pack up in Burt, and uh, then we'll take the tent down, which ought to be fun. 
thank you guys for watching. Truly appreciate you. Now that we've got a little bit more old confidence in Bert, some more things will be happening. Places further off. Some monkey stuff involved. Maybe some parkway stuff involved. Maybe some Blue Ridge Parkway stuff involved. You just don't know. Either way, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Whatever the next one may be. Fish just jumped over there. They do that once they know I'm leaving.